Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. And today I want to talk about toxic assets. People are talking a lot about toxic assets and saying they're the main thing that's dragging down banks, the banks that are putting out some of these awful numbers and having such a hard time. And to hear some people talk about it, you'd think that the only things that the banks have on their balance sheet are in fact toxic assets. Well, that's not quite true. So let's have a talk about what to toxic assets are and maybe explain a little bit about that. So firstly, let's talk about what banks do hold on the balance sheet. Well, you know, they hold a variety of stuff, of course, as we know. They hold bonds, they hold stock, they hold loans, they might hold, um, whoops, loans, hold mortgage-backed securities, they might hold credit uh, CDOs, they might hold credit default swaps. So a variety of things they hold on the balance sheet. Um, but when people talk about toxic assets, most of the time they're talking about this stuff here. This is the, uh, the mortgage-backed securities, the CDOs that are made off MBS, and also the credit default swaps that are causing a, a lot of trouble right now. But uh, to, let's have an analogy to talk about what these, uh, to, to, what, how, to talk about what the exact level of toxicity we have here. And uh, the analogy is going to be uh, our wine buyer. So here we are. Here's Mr. Lewis. He's gone to buy uh, some wine from his local wine cellar, and uh, he's not very happy. And we'll see why in a minute. Well, because uh, the wine cellar has given him a mixed case. All right. So he's given him a box of wine, but it's a, it's a mixed case, and he's left it up to. Uh, to the, to the wine cellar to decide what's going to go in the case. This is an appropriate analogy because a lot of people say that the banks have essentially got a mixed case of, uh, of securities when they've gone out and bought some of their CDOs or mortgage-backed securities or their, not necessarily their CDS, but certainly the CDOs and the mortgage-backed securities because they haven't really done their due diligence with this stuff. They don't really know what they've got. They've relied on ratings agencies that uh, you know didn't really understand uh, the product that was being sold. And as a result, they've got... Uh, a, 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 a box of securities, a quantity of securities that they're only now finding out uh, the quality of. And so the same thing happens to Mr. Lewis, our wine seller. He goes home, he opens the box, and inside he finds that he's got three types of wine. Okay? The first type of wine that he's got is Chateau Y. Okay? Chateau Y is the type of wine that when you drink it, it immediately gives you a headache. I mean, all you do is sniff it and it gives you a headache. This stuff is lethal. It's going to make you sick. It's going to make you, you know, paralytically hungover. It is, in fact, toxic wine. Okay, so he's got a third of that. Next third of the case is Chateau X. Okay. Now, this is, uh, this is Chateau X is kind of the unknown, all right, which is why it's X. It's kind of unknown because he tastes it. It doesn't taste too good right now, but it could have potential. It could actually come out okay in the future. He feels that if he lays it down, then in the next sort of five to eight years, it actually could turn into quite a nice little bottle of wine. It has the a lot of potential, all right? And then he has Chateau Z or Chateau Z. And uh, this is the stuff that uh, when you drink it, you know, it's, you know you've got a good deal. It's, a meat, it's, it's perfect, straight out of the bottle, absolutely excellent. You've got to uncork it today, you drink a bottle of it, no hangover, absolutely perfect wine, exactly what you want. So how does this relate to what uh, the banks have got in their, uh, in their little box, their little black box? Okay, so, um, well, firstly, they've got their Chateau Y, which is, you know, why did I buy this stuff? And that's the toxic assets, all right? And when we talk about toxic assets, this is genuinely toxic. This is stuff that's genuinely get you sick. It is the, it, it's the securities based on credit cards that are never going to be paid. Securities based on auto loans that are never going to be paid. Securities based on uh, mortgage-backed securities, which themselves are based on mortgages that never had a chance of being paid, that were never going to be maintained, and they were always going to be absolutely worthless. This stuff, when the banks bought it, they bought it at 100 cents on the dollar. It is now worth zero, a big donut. It's never going to be worth any more than that. It is dragging their balance sheets down. It is absolutely lethally toxic. Okay? Then they've got their shadow X, the, the unknown quantity. And this is the stuff, it's the long-term asset, all right? Because this stuff, although it may taste a little dodgy right now, may seem a little dodgy right now, it could be good in five to eight years. If the economy picks up, people are able to start paying their loans again, able to start maintaining their credit card debt, then this stuff could actually be quite good. You know, it could mature in the end, pay out to the banks. It could have a long life as a, uh, as a functioning asset. So it, is, it has a lot of potential. It is potentially good. Then, of course, they've got their Chateau Z, their last, uh, the last part of their portfolio, which is the good stuff. And that's the, the securities that are based on assets that are you know, perfectly good. Mortgage lenders or mortgage borrowers are always going to be current on their loans credit card uh, holders who are always going to be up to date on their payments. They're never going to default They're all, they're, well, for as long as the economy is good. They're going to keep paying through. The loan's going to mature. Everyone's going to be happy. That's the good stuff. So really, their assets kind of divide into three. 
we've got the really bad stuff, which is genuinely toxic. Then we've got the long-term assets, which you know, are potentially good, but also potentially toxic, because if the economy goes bad, that stuff could go down as also. And then you've got the good stuff, which hopefully will be good through, through to perpetuity. So if you take this, if you look at the, uh, the, the case of wine and compare it, well, firstly, we have our toxic stuff, shadow why. Why on earth did I buy that? Well, it's absolutely useless. It's toxic. You may as well just throw it in the trash right now. That gives us two-thirds of our portfolio of wine that's actually okay. But now we have a problem, which is the state of the economy. Because the economy is, is bad, it means that you know, the bottle of, uh, of Chateau X, which was worth $10 when Mr. Lewis bought it, that's now going to start to fall. Why? Because, well, maybe Mr. Lewis's wife has lost her job. Okay, so he's got to make some cutbacks. He's got to get some cash into the, uh, into the house. How does he do that? He does it by selling some assets. He has a yard sale, you know, he does this, he does that, but in the end he has to start selling off his prized wine collection. The first stuff to go is the stuff that's going to have to wait a while. It's the Chateau X, and it starts to go out the door. But unfortunately, everybody else in Mr. Lewis's village is in a similar position. They're also affected by the economy. They've also got to get some extra cash coming in the door, so they start selling their Chateau X as well. And as a result, the price of the wine goes down. There's so many sellers, it drives it down to, say, $2 a bottle. All right. So how does this relate to our bank? Well, these long-term assets, we've got rid of these toxic assets. They're worth absolutely nothing. We try to sell those to the government. Our long-term assets, well, we'd like to keep them, but we can't because we've got to sell. The banks have got to sell these assets because they've got to bring cash onto the balance sheet. They've got to recapitalize themselves. Unfortunately, everybody else is trying to sell these assets as well, which means that they are being driven down in the market. Let's take an example. Uh, Charter Communications has got a bank deal in the market. It should be worth 100 cents on the dollar. Right now it's trading at 75 cents. The bank has to mark that asset at 75 cents. So it doesn't matter if the bank thinks it's worth 100 cents on the dollar. It doesn't matter that if we looked into the future, Charter Communications would be able to keep on maintaining its loan and pay it off in three years' time or whenever. That doesn't matter. What matters is today's price. And today's price is if you're selling Chateau X, it's $2. If you're selling Charter Communications, it's 75 cents. The bank has to mark it at that level. And the more pressure there is on those prices, the further those prices go down, and the more toxic those assets become. Not toxic in, the, in themselves, but toxic to the bank because their price is going down. Okay, so this means the long-term asset, your Chateau X, starts to become toxic. Now we've got Chateau Z. This is the good stuff. As the economy, if the economy sort of continues to sputter along, all's well. You know, maybe this uh, Mr. Lewis could go out and he could continue to sell the wine at $30 a bottle, which is the price that he bought it at. But as the economy starts to deteriorate and gets worse and worse and worse, maybe he himself loses his job, or maybe he has to, you know, send his kids to college, or whatever it may be. He needs more cash coming in the door. Eventually, he's going to have to start selling the good stuff too, the core assets. What's that going to do? It's going to drive their price down because everyone else is at the same thing. Maybe this goes down to $10. The same thing happens to the banks. Their good stuff, eventually, if the economy continues to deteriorate and the state of their bottom line continues to, get to, to, to worsen, it means that they are going to have to sell the good stuff too. All of their core assets are going to have to go because they're going to have to bring that cash on, or not all the core assets, but many of them, because they've got to get that cash on board. What does it do? It even brings the price of the good stuff down. So what's it doing? It's making good assets potentially toxic because their price is being driven down. There are so many sellers in the market that the, uh, the originally 100 cents on the dollar goes to 75, goes to 50, goes to, to wherever it goes because there are so many sellers. It, it turns good assets, long-term assets, long-term holdings into toxic assets. So essentially there are kind of three types of toxic asset that we see. There are, we have the really toxic asset, we have the potentially toxic asset, and then we have the good asset, which unfortunately, because of the state of the economy, is being turned into a toxic asset because of the need to mark to market and the fact that prices are being driven down and leaving everybody very badly, appropriately enough, needing a drink.